would we have beaten them if we hadn't got sick? Probably. You know, like, I, I always said to people, like, that team, we could have played them ten times and nine out of ten times we would have beaten them. And ironically, the, the, the ten times that you, if you go back in history from the time that they beat us, and, or, and, and from 96 through, we had played them ten times and they only beat us once. And it was, the, was, and it was, that, was one. That, that one. <laughs> but I also feel um, there was something there was something bigger going on in, in that whole crazy coffee pot of crazy, you know, like brewing away in South Africa. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really curious about post apartheid because it was only yeah. what four years post apartheid, three or four yeah, years. Yeah, so they just returned, and like we've been going, we've been over a couple of years. I've been over maybe two, or three times uh, previously uh, before that World Cup, and it was really a, apartheid was still part of it there, you know, and um, like you didn't see any. If we were in the white area, we didn't see any blacks, and I mean that's the bit. I, I don't know if I'm saying it. Yeah, PC correctly, I don't know, but you just didn't. And then when we when we went over to uh, in that that World Cup, you started to see a little bit more of that mixing. And then when we were going and training, all the the black population would come out and they'd be chanting "Go black, go black," you know, and be in our corner. And then you go to the games and walk past the white population, they'd be spitting on you because you're, you know, you're a Kiwi, and and you know, like. Just You're sharing a team with with other ethnicities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was just kind of it was it was it was, and then there was guns, and it was just this incredible energy always going on, you know. And the car parks, the alarms were always going off every night, and every, you know, it was just it was just really unique and dynamic. And even even how uh, South Africa made it into uh, the into the finals, you know, the, the games that they had to get through to get there was like, there was always some crazy event. Like, the heavens the, opening up against France. Was it the gold watch? Is that the... Well, no, that, that was the final bit. <laughs> but the, 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 the heavens opening up, and, and remember that they they, they uh, postponed the... They delayed the kickoff, didn't they? For six hours. <laughs> yeah. And and the French were down at the ground for the six hours while the South Africans were at their hotel for it. Yeah. You know, and it was just... And remember, they were mopping up the... the it was It was... It was nuts. Yeah. And then there was the disallowed try that still to this day the French will say it wasn't it shouldn't have been disallowed. Mm. You know, so um and then there were events in in the uh in the final as well where we could have won it. Mm. You know? Um but I think possibly because of mental uh, attrition from being, you know, so many of our guys being sick, you know, that we just just weren't quite there to make good decisions. You were healthy, right? You chose the the beef over the chicken or something. <laughs> yeah, like that? I, I ate beef over chicken. I, Always I, I, choose beef over look, chicken. I don't know if it was in in the in the beef as well, but the chicken uh, you make, was make your own burgers, and the chicken burgers were green. And I remember asking the guy, "Well, what are those?" And he goes, "Oh, they're chicken burgers." I said, "Green chicken? Nah, I don't think he uh. knows." <laughs> and I ate the beef burgers, and um, I remember being going to the toilet maybe five times that night. But just, you know, diarrhea, sort of, not nothing too serious. And then the next day I was fine. But for a few of the other boys, they were just chundering, you know. And, and do you have a crisis meeting? Like you're waking up, everyone's so sick. You're like, what, uh, what yeah, are we going to do Yeah, they, do they, they got us, they, they came, they brought us together and said there was something going on. And I just still didn't even understand, even on the, till game day. Again, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, that, like, like I said, I, you know, there were moments where we could have, Turn that game into our own. We just our our senior members um, had a bit of brain fog, I think. Talk talk to us about being in the presence of Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Um, what is that actually like? Because I don't know too many people well, that have want, met him. Do you want what, the truthful answer? Go on. All right. So you know when I warm up uh, for a rugby game, how I sit there and jiggle, right? Because for me, uh, when I first started playing footy, it was about getting warmed up, come out. Humming to play footy, right? Mm. And then as you get up further in your levels, you get all of a sudden you go from uh, starting right when the whistle, you know, run out, whistle goes, mm. play game, right? To suddenly, oh, you, you've got to go out, uh, you've got to do a hucker, 
or you got to do a, sing a national anthem, or in our case, two anthems. Yeah. You know, um, and then you meet David and then <laughs> South Africa, they've got two now. Yeah. And so it's like suddenly from starting from when the when the whistle the referee pulls you out the tunnel and going straight on and playing. You've got you've gone from ten minutes to twenty minutes to forty minutes to an hour before you actually play. And so for me it was all about like shaking out and getting in the zone and being in in full rugby josh mode, you know? Mm. And no other empty baggage. But I remember uh, Nelson Mandela walking down and thinking fuck are they doing now? <laughs> you know, because, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on. You know? like, the and plane flew over as well? Oh, there was all sorts. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But Ignor ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah, ignorance is bliss. But the whole stadium shook when it went over. Yeah. And, um, and uh, but I'm just thinking, see, I just want to play rugby. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm in my zone. I've hit my zone and I'm ready to go. And it's like everybody tells you about there's an arousal. If you're too over aroused, headless chicken. If you're under aroused, you don't get it. So I'm trying to keep myself bang on that right spot mm. next thing there's this dude walking down and shaking hands and i'm saying Fuck this. and then i realized it was nelson mandela yeah. and i was like Fuck, nelson mandela wow you know <laughs> and then i went rugby oh, <laughs> and then i started i look up at the ceiling and, I, and i'm going and i'm looking up and as i look up and i'm shaking and i'm and jiggling and i notice there's all like all the way across the top of that stadium it's like surrounded like that is um Guys in full SAS, um, wow. black smock, you know, with sniper rifles looking over the thing. And I'm thinking, fuck, man, this is a, this is the, this is a moment. This, yeah. You know, this is a stage for someone to make a statement. You know, like, someone's going to shoot this bugger. <laughs> and I don't know, mate, but I do say when, I, when he shook my hands, I might have moved my head. <laughs> 